you think of space, NASA is what comes to mind. As the most iconic agency in the US, it has been responsible for a majority of humanity's discoveries in space. Equipped with both the funds and the equipment to see into the farthest reaches of the known universe, NASA's potential seemed limitless. That is, until they teamed up with the infamous Elon Musk. One of the greatest inventors of our time, Musk has opened up brand new opportunities that make the already massive organization even more powerful. Even a planet as close as Neptune seemed to be holding out secrets that only recently have been discovered by Musk and NASA. Here is the terrifying new discovery on Neptune that can change everything. Neptune We have a long history with this blue gas giant. Being initially discovered in 1846, then being later explored by the Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, we have always taken interest in this mysterious planet. Thanks to the efforts of a 12-year journey by the Voyager 2 spacecraft, it was discovered that the planet had rings. A beautiful but relatively small discovery in comparison to the raging storm that was also found during the same mission. Thanks to many years of observation and research, rings on Neptune were expected. However, the biggest storm ever recorded was not. Dubbed the Great Dark Spot, the storm was spotted on the southern hemisphere with counterclockwise winds of up to 1500 miles per hour or 2414 kilometers per hour. It was the strongest ever recorded. I wish we could say that we got an ample amount of research done on it, but after only five years, it was gone. By the time the Hubble Space Telescope looked at the planet, the storm was gone without a trace. This led to lots of unanswered questions about why the winds were so strong. When asked about the storm, NASA explained it like this. We believe shallow processes in the outer atmosphere or much deeper atmospheric changes that extended into the interior. But it's still a mystery. The strong wind, however, was not the only thing puzzling about Neptune. Its temperature was also a big mystery. Voyager 2 revealed that Neptune is warmer than Uranus, despite being farther from the Sun. Typically, it is believed that the closer you are to the Sun, the warmer you are as well. Makes sense, right? If you're close to the heat source, you're warm. If you are far from it, you are cold. Despite this, Neptune showed to be warmer than its neighbor Uranus. So where is this heat coming from? Physicist Brian Cox discussed this in his BBC documentary, The Planet. The source of this extra heat remains a mystery. However, the biggest puzzle was whether the two usual behaviors that are the strong wind and the elevated temperature were in any way tied. Some scientists even speculated that unraveling one mystery would explain the other. But how would this be achieved? Measuring Neptune's temperature is not so straightforward. On Earth, you can take measurements on the solid surface and calculate the global average. If you must take a temperature of Neptune, it has to be at an altitude. This is where you need to make another decision. What altitude will you take the measurement? More than that, there is something else about the temperature measurement taken by the Voyager 2. Obviously, it took the temperature from the outermost layer. At that point, the temperature of Neptune is not so much higher than that of Uranus, but since Neptune receives less solar illumination because of its distance from the Sun, this shouldn't be the case. The similarity in temperature suggests that Neptune is warmer in terms of how much heat it emits in comparison to the amount of heat it absorbs from the Sun. According to Anthony Del Genio from NASA, Voyager's measurements show Neptune emits more than twice as much heat as it absorbs from the Sun, while Uranus does not. The funny thing is, this doesn't mean Neptune is unusual. In fact, it makes Uranus the weird one. Other planets like Jupiter and Saturn also emit more heat than they absorb from the Sun. As stated earlier, the progression of temperature as you go farther away from the Sun shows Jupiter to be the warmest of the gas giants. Saturn next, then Neptune. Uranus is the one that is out of place. Del Genio explained the oddity further, yet that unusual result is associated with the fact that Uranus does not have a significant internal heat source. In other words, Neptune is finding a way to warm itself up to the levels of Uranus, while the latter is unable to generate any extra heat other than that from the Sun. The internal heat source, in simple terms, is heat left over from the birth of the solar system, back when these planets were being formed. The heat contracts out of the primitive solar nebula, forming an effect known as the Kelvin-Helmholtz contraction. 
The extra heat source on Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn are primarily due to gravitational contraction as the planet slowly gravitationally contracts the material falling inward, changing it into potential energy, thermal energy. That energy is then released upwards out of the planet. Uranus does not have such a heat source. Something must have happened to it. So the question is, why does Neptune produce heat internally, but Uranus does not? There is a possibility that heat is not released from Uranus at a steady rate, but instead comes in burps. Joshua Tollefson from the University of California, Berkeley, theorizes we may just be seeing Uranus in a quiescent period, whereas Neptune has burped more recently, thus radiating residual heat. The burps may happen in discrete episodes separated by long periods of time, although we may not know if this is true unless we see one of these episodes take place. Another, simpler solution could be that Uranus is simply much older than Neptune. The amount of heat a planet radiates depends mostly on how old it is and how quickly or slowly it releases that heat. An older planet like Uranus would be colder. How quickly they release the heat depends on the interior structure, composition of cloud layers, convection, and so on. All that can be rather complicated, and a single flyby of the Voyager 2 does not provide enough data to explain all the mysteries. Conex Of course, the scientific community does not like to leave things unanswered. So, in an effort to solve these mysteries, a group of scientists named Conceptual Exploration Research, or CONEX, has proposed a spacecraft called Arcanum. The Arcanum mission is a proposed L-class spacecraft that highlights the revolutionary approach of future space mission design. Weighing in at about 21 metric tons, the spacecraft would be four times heavier than the largest deep space probe to date. Konex's Arcanum would have numerous components, including an orbiter to study Neptune, a lander to study Triton, and a penetrator to strike Triton's surface and perform a seismic experiment to understand its geology and its structure. The mission could also be equipped with a telescope, allowing for studies of the outer solar system and aiding the hunt for planets around other stars. Sounds good, right? Well, it's a little too good to be true. The problem is that there is no existing rocket that could currently launch such a craft as Konex's Arcanum. Typically, when scientists face problems like this, they would try to work around them. Elon Musk Enter Elon Musk. The billionaire has made a name for himself in space exploration, and his starship designs could also revolutionize what we know about our neighboring planets and moons. According to a scientist from Purdue University, the Starship would totally change the way that we can do solar system exploration and planetary science. The field of astronomy would explode. Scientists are already talking about sending missions to Neptune and its largest moon in the outer solar system. More than that, scientists would be able to bring back vast quantities of space rock from Earth's moon and Mars. Even something as outlandish as developing innovative ways to protect the Earth from incoming asteroids would become a reality. Starship, which is being built at a Texas site dubbed Starbase, is made up of a giant spaceship on top of a large booster known as Super Heavy. Both can return to the Earth to be reused, reducing costs significantly. SpaceX has suggested launches that would cost a mere $2 million using the Starship. In the scientific community, that's practically loose change. With a drastic reduction in costs, more funds can go towards the actual equipment for the scientific experiment or exploration. The rocket will be capable of lifting 100 metric tons or 220,000 pounds of cargo and people into space on regular low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within the Starship is a massive 1,000 cubic meters. You can fit the entire disassembled Eiffel Tower into the shipyard payload area. That's very exciting. For example, you can transport a whole drilling rig to Neptune using the Starship and drill down a kilometer, just like on Earth. This will give scientists an unprecedented amount of access to the interior of the planet, which is why Konex proposes sending the Arcanum to Neptune aboard the Starship. Musk has suggested that SpaceX could launch as many as a dozen Starship test flights in 2022. With missions to the Moon and Mars on the horizon, we are on the cusp of a golden age of space exploration. As soon as the Starships begin to launch, the development of new information will be very fast. A floodgate of information and possibilities will swing open, and the science of the Earth will begin to develop very rapidly. When you have a 100-ton capability, adding on scientific hardware would be fairly easy. 
This new capability would provide a drastic change in how we do science, especially because starships can land back on Earth. It will also theoretically be able to bring back vast amounts of samples. The sheer volume that could be returned from Neptune would give scientists on Earth the ability to shed light on a myriad of mysteries. Another one of the things that makes the Starship suitable for NASA missions to deep space is its method of refueling. Unlike other super-heavy rockets, the upper half of the rocket is designed to be refueled in Earth orbit by other starships. This would mean that more of its lifting capability can be used towards scientific equipment rather than the fuel for the initial launch. Although, this might require eight separate launches. With each consecutive tanker, the Starship would bring up fuel to the lunar Starship based on the Moon. The Starship would replenish all the fuel spent during the escape from Earth and then proceed to the outer planets on full tanks. There are even talks about having fuel depots on other planets where the Starship can stop to refuel, just like an interstellar gas station. Admittedly, this is ambitious, but it makes missions to planets like Neptune or the moons attached to Jupiter much more feasible and less complicated to coordinate. I know what you're thinking. This sounds way too far-fetched to be true. Well, it's not. Elon Musk is deep into the development of Starship. Together with NASA, these two titans will usher in a new era of space exploration. The mysteries of Neptune would seem elementary compared to the infinite capabilities of the upcoming age of space exploration.